This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everybody, first things first, you probably noticed we're in a new space. That's because my wife and I moved out to California and she decorated this office for me for YouTube. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Now let's go through the soft body physics in Blender, specifically how we can use those on characters. First, we'll start with a quick overview of all the settings and I'll walk you through how I made this little slime character briefly at the end. So we're gonna start by adding a quadrosphere, which you'll need to have an add-on enabled called Extra Objects. So if you go to Add-on and you search Extra, and you can just enable Add Mesh Extra Objects. And then I also like Add Curve, but we won't be using that for this tutorial. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna X out of there. Let's add a quadrosphere. So if you go to Shift Add Mesh, you'll now see that you have more options under Mesh than you did before. And if we click Round Cube, we can see it's going to give us this cube with round edges. But if we click over here, we can go through various presets and I'm going to choose quad sphere. So let's go ahead and move this up on the Z axis there. And then I'm going to add a plane underneath it. And then I'm going to scale that up. So just scale that up to whatever size you see fit. And we're going to come over here to this tab and we'll click here on the physics properties with the plane selected. And we're going to add a collision modifier. Now we're going to go here to the sphere and we're going to actually add a cloth. They improved some of the cloth simulation, making it much faster and much more accurate. And with the internal springs and pressure, we can simulate soft body inside of cloth, but much quicker in the viewport. So let's go ahead. I'm going to right click and shade smooth this, and we're going to hit play and we'll see that it crumples onto our plane there with the default settings. Now I'm going to go over to the modifier tab with the sphere selected. I'm going to add a subdivision surface here. And then I'm actually going to drag that above my cloth just so I can show you what it does here. And you'll notice that things are looking a bit wonky and that's because it hasn't recalculated it, but I'm here in the middle of the timeline. So if I go back here and hit play, we'll see that now it moves forward and it's crumpling completely because there's way more geometry. So let's take a look at exactly how the physics kind of work in this cloth simulation. So you can see that we have tension springs here, which are drawn in blue, and you can see we have compression strings, which are drawn here in red. And then in between, we have these shear ones, which are done in scion. So what that's going to do is as Blender calculates what's going to collapse, it will kind of calculate these springs in between. Now, the reason I point you to this boring diagram is because that's going to bring a bit of clarity to some of the settings within here. So you can see that when we have the subdivision surface, more crumbles because there's more faces for it to work with. Now, I personally find that when I'm trying to do soft body physics, you don't want that many faces because it actually makes it kind of harder to get that kind of jello soft body look. So I'm actually going to move it after my cloth. So it's going to calculate with the lower res geometry and then just smooth that out. And that'll kind of help it look a little more stiff as you can already see kind of here, which is what you want more when you're going for soft body. So let's go ahead and we're actually just gonna walk through the settings over here. And then I'm gonna kind of walk you through my character at the end of the video. First of all, let's just give our sphere a bit more of an interesting shape. And you'll notice that when you go forward in the simulation, if you tab into edit mode, it's going to snap you back up to where it originally was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this bottom here. I'm gonna take this proportional editing and I'm gonna scale that on the Z. I'm gonna take this top piece here and I'm going to scale that in a tiny bit. And if you recall, the slime creature I made kind of had this kind of globby teardrop shape. So that was kind of the body shape I started with there. And we'll go through how to create him more at the end. So let's zoom back out here to solid view and let's walk through some of the settings over here now that I kind of have a general shape of what I want my character to look like. So we have quality steps here. The higher the number this is, the higher the quality of the simulation will be because it will have more steps per frame that it is calculating. However, the higher it is, the slower it is. And when I'm doing basic soft body physics, I find that just like honestly a really low number, like three or four works, and I can just toss the subdivision on it. I find I don't really need the higher numbers unless you're doing something incredibly complicated like a cape. Down here, you have the speed multiplier, which will change the speed of the animation. So I'm going to leave that at one. We have the vertex mass, which will kind of determine the mass of this object. Now I'm not using realistic numbers here. I'm just kind of eyeballing it for what I think looks best. So I'm going to leave this at default. Air viscosity will kind of like make the air thicker to make them fall slower. And then here's where that diagram really comes in being useful. 
is we have the tension and the compression and the shear and the bending. So for example, if I turn all these numbers down to something really low and I hit play, we'll see that it starts to kind of collapse into itself because the tension, the compression, and the shear springs it's calculating on all of those faces isn't like holding up as strong because we've lowered the numbers. So if I bump those numbers back up to 15, 15, and five and hit play, we'll see that it holds our structure much more. Also bending here is a really useful one and that's just kind of the bending stiffness. So if you find that your object's collapsing onto itself a lot, you can crank up the bending and you'll find that it won't bend nearly as much. But if you put too high of a number, so let's do something like 50 here, it can sometimes cause this weird jitter. So just be careful when you're playing with those numbers there. Damping here is operates same as damping in all other physics properties. So it's just dampening the tension, the compression, the shear, and the bending values that you're using. Now, if you don't know what damping is, it's basically just kind of like softening that calculation or slowing it down a bit, making it a bit more subtle. Here we have internal springs. Now, if you look at the internal springs documentation in the Blender manual, they actually even say this makes it operate very similarly to how the soft body physics simulator works by kind of changing the way the springs work. And again, you have tension and compression settings here with a min and max value. We won't really be using that one. Next up, let's take a peek at this pressure section down here. So let's go ahead, turn this on and kind of restart our simulation there. So if we hit play here, you can see that it hasn't changed anything and that's because we haven't implied any pressure. So what the pressure setting does is the pressure setting actually adds pressure from inside of the object. So it's almost like air inside of a balloon trying to escape. So let's go ahead, turn this number up to something like five. If we go ahead and do that, you can see that it now pops out and gives a balloon. So we're actually going to be using this to kind of simulate a lot of our jello look in our slime character. And down here, we have the pressure scale, which you can increase this value to kind of help maintain its um, volume a bit. Because once you start adding crazy amounts of pressure, you can see here that it's going to start adding more volume. So you can kind of play with the scale there and kind of change what you want the volume to look like there. I obviously added too much, so let's go ahead, make this 10, make this five, and you can see that it's made the object much bigger. So I'm just gonna go ahead, return this to zero, return this to one. Now fluid density, it can you have to play with pressure scale to get good results, but you can actually simulate fluid inside of this object. If you watch my Blender Features video, there's an example of that in there. And fluid density of one will actually make it look like there's water inside of your object, but it takes a lot of playing with pressure scale and things that we're not gonna mess with because they're a bit advanced for this section. Next up, now that we're done with the physical properties, we're almost done, let's look at the cache. So here we can bake all of our dynamics into it so that we don't calculate here. You see we had this little blue line Whereas if you go ahead here and you bake all the dynamics, you can save that onto your hard drive so that you don't have to bake it every time you're playing. This is perfect if you're on a slower machine and you can't preview in real time. Next up, let's take a look at collisions. Just like before, the higher the quality, the better it is, but the longer it's going to take. Here we have the object collisions, and that's checked on by default. Here's the distance at which it will be. The lower that number is, the harder it's going to be to calculate, but the more accurate it will be. You can see here that when it hits, it almost hits kind of a tiny bit above, and that's because it's set to 0 0.015. Most of the time, it's not visible, but if you're right up on it, you're gonna need some pretty close collisions there. And then we also have self collisions. So if you have an object with multiple objects in it, so if I go ahead, take this, duplicate this, move that up on the Z axis, back out, start here, so that we can kind of reset our collision there. And if we go ahead and hit play, we can see that they will actually bump into each other. So that's how you can use multiple objects. And then the last object here, which I don't see many people cover, which is so important, is the uh, property weights section. So if you noticed, we also had these up in the physical properties under pressure and internal swings. So you can set this to be only on certain vertex groups. So let's go ahead. We're going to go in here. Let's actually select this one. We'll go to our vertex groups here. Let's create a new tab, call this balloon. And we're going to assign that vertex group. And then we can actually change the properties of that vertex group isolated. So we say we want that one to blow up. We can go into the vertex group select balloon, we can add five pressure. 
And then let's come down here to the bending. And let's say we don't want it to bend that much. So we have a max bending of 50 there, which is gonna to be too high. So we're gonna lower that down to like five. And then if we hit play, we'll see that that top one doesn't bend as much and it kind of balloons out. So by using these vertex groups, you can apply where you want that to uh, have effect on. So for this example, uh, I'm going to be applying it mostly to the overall character, but if you wanted, you could actually go ahead and maybe just apply these to a vertex group that was like the stomach of your character. So that if you had a fat character, you can make their stomachs uh, bounce around. So I'm gonna go ahead, go back into edit mode here. I'm going to delete this here so that we're back here. We're gonna walk through a bit of how to make the character I did. Before we hop over to how I made this character, let's talk about our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and lifelong learners where millions come together to improve their skills. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, freelancing, 3D, and more. It's a membership with meaning. You get thousands of classes and most are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule and to fit all skill levels. I personally have a few 3D courses on there. Jazza has an awesome course where he walks you through his illustration process, a great course to take if you really want to get better at designing your 3D characters. For a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. So to start with this character, let's start with a fresh cloth. So if you've been following along with me, come up here, grab your object, deselect cloth up there, and then reapply it. Make sure it's where you want it in the subdivision modifier. So since I added that, it's now on top of the subdivision modifier. But what that does is it kind of resets our settings here to default. And I'm going to show you the settings I used. Now, I think it's worth pointing out that depending on your object, your mesh, your object size, your scene, there are a lot of factors that could change what these numbers need to be. If you're following along exactly with me, these numbers over here should work, but just know that if you find things exploding, it may be difficult to help you in the comments. So I just really encourage you to try one value at a time so that you don't accidentally break your simulation. But I left my quality steps at five and I left all these at default. Down here for the stiffness, I changed this to one and I changed the compression to one because I wanted it to be kind of jelly-like. I left the shear at five because I didn't want it to lose completely of its form. So by kind of holding those middle pieces together, it still keeps a bit of its form. And I didn't want it to bend terribly much. So I bumped up bending to two. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like there. And you can see that's looking good, but as it comes down, it's got a nice soft jello look. But if we look here, as it crashes, we see that the tip is kind of dipping in and that the sides here are starting to concave in, which is more than I want. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of pressure from inside to kind of help it keep its form. So if I turn on pressure, I just want a little bit. So I'm just gonna add one. I'm going to leave the target volume at the default zero there. And for the pressure scale, I'm going to bump this up to two. And then I added a tiny bit of fluid by putting 0.1 to give it a bit more of kind of a jello look. So now if we go there, you can see that we have a much softer rounder look. So how did I go about making the eyes? So I took the antennas, so we're gonna tab in here to edit mode. And what we're going to do is come up here to the top, go to face mode, and let's just select two spots here where you want your antennas to pop out. I'm gonna snap back on the front view by hitting the number pad. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to extrude up. Now I'm going to go back to vertice mode and I'm gonna to switch to wireframe mode and I'm going to box select here and I'm going to move these items out after I turn off proportional editing from before. And that's just so that I kind of give them more of a spread there. Now I want to add some geometry there so there's actually room for them to bend. So by printing Control R, I will open the loop cut tool. And then if I scroll up on the mouse wheel, I can add some geometry there. And I just want to add about the same amount of cuts on both sides. And with that, we have our antennas. So let's take a look at how that plays back. And when we hit play here, you can see that they're just kind of collapsing into itself and that's because there's no self collision. So if we come back down here to the self collisions, we can turn on collisions here and then we can go ahead, hit play again and we can see that now the antennas are bouncing off but they're a little too floppy. So next what I'm going to do is add those antennas to a vertex group to give them a bit more structure than the rest of it. So we're going to go in here to edit mode. I'm going to grab the vertices here on the top, 
on both sides. And then I'm going to hit control plus and that will grow the selection until it reaches out there. And I'm just gonna go one more to give a bit more structural integrity around those areas. Now I'm going to go to vertex group. I'm gonna delete that one from before, create a new one and call this antenna. And then I'm going to assign those vertex groups. Don't forget to click assign. I'm gonna come back here into my front view and I'm going to grab this object, go to solid view, scroll down here to property weights. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add this into these groups here and leave the default settings on. And that should add a bit more structure. Let's see how it plays out. And there we go. We can see that now our antennas are kind of staying into place. Now for the eyes, those were pretty simple. All I did is add a sphere. So I added another mesh sphere. And then I just scaled that down and put it over the antenna. And then I duplicated that mesh. I'm going to wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. So I just hit Shift D to duplicate. And I'm just gonna scale that one down to create a pupil. And I go to side view here by pressing three on my numpad. And I'm going to move that forward on the Y axis to add a pupil. I'm gonna take that eyeball. I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm just going to scale that up. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. And I'm going to delete the bottom half of those vertices there. I'm going to select this bottom edge loop by alt clicking it, tap F to fill, and that will put a face on the bottom. Then I'm going to go back out to object mode into my side view and scale that up until it kind of covers the front of that pupil. And then I joined all these objects by selecting them all and hitting control J into one object and putting that onto my antenna there. I'm going to shade smooth there and now when I come back out here into the front, you can see that we have a little eyeball on his antenna. And then for the colors of the eye, I just use a basic material and just change them to black and white. And let's look at how I made that slime material and how I attached that eye to the antenna. So attaching the eye to the antenna is pretty easy. If you just grab the eyeball here, you grab your object here. I'm gonna go back to the first frame. We're gonna line our eyeball up on the first frame so that we know it kind of starts with the mesh. So I'll grab the eyeball, I'll grab the mesh, I'll tab into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is kind of hard, but I'm going to grab one of these vertices up here. I'm going to hit control P. And if you had started with both of those selected like I did in that order, you should get make vertex parent option. I'm going to deselect, go back out to object mode and see how that looks. And we can see that it's attached it to that vertice. So now it's bouncing around. And of course, I just did the same thing for the other eye. And let's take a look at that slime material I made. So here I am with the other project open, and you can see here I have the slime material with some air bubbles in it. Now I'm actually doing a separate tutorial for air bubbles and foam because that's kind of warrants a video all on its own. But in terms of the slime material itself, it's pretty simple. Here I have it zoomed in so that you can pause on HD and see what I have and copy my settings. But I have a noise texture plugged into a bump, plugged into the normal, I have the transmission turned up to one, and then I have the specular turned all the way up to one. And that's all I did to get this kind of material. Of course, a base green in there. I found a yellow or green looked a bit better, but I also kind of like the look of kind of the bright blue slime. And with that, that's how I went about making this character. I'm excited to see what characters you come up with. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to tag me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and subscribe and comment below what you'd like to see next.